Welcome everybody <laughs> to the pull up experience. I had to let that camera come on before I took the last bite. Pippi is phenomenal. You know, back in the day, my mother used to buy the cookies that were in the mall. I don't remember what the company, comp the cookie company was called, but she would get a bag of butter cookies. They sold them by the pound. Mm -hmm. And it was the best thing I ever tasted. And I just got, um, I just, it just took me back. This butter cookie is so delicious and rich, and I can actually taste the butter. Mm -hmm. You guys must support, you must support. We have a special guest today that got the fix for that sweet tooth when you feel like you just have to have something to snack on to munch on when you want to indulge because it's amazing we have a special guest today and her name is e denise well her ig name is e denise cooks yeah. and her name is erica yeah. erica denise and she <laughs> makes for the bomb cookies what, what what's the uh word your, your kids use now i'm sorry what <laughs> <laughs> we can wait. Bussin' bussin'. Bussin' bussin'. Thank you for bussin' bussin'. Yes. Thanks, y'all. Yes, I love it. I'm so happy you enjoy so those. I make those fresh readers. Oh, you know. oh, they on. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. No question. Wonderful. Oh, yeah. So go ahead and. <laughs> you heard me. I said, okay, I'm about to smash this, this before the camera get rolling, but I wanted y'all to know that it's authentic. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So Erica, go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. Tell hey, people who you are. I am Erica E. Denise Cooks. Um, I baked those cookies today. I'm also Erica from Edenese Tutors. So, um, I guess we got a lot to cover today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> multi talented. Yeah, multi, -talented. multi faceted, and that's like two. Well, I guess it's kind of close because you you want to look out for the children. You want to make sure they get their sweets in too. That was a hell of a pivot to go from <laughs> cooking into education. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. I just one day was like, you know what? I'm done being in the kitchen. And I well, I'm glad you did. Okay. <laughs> so I don't cook as much as I used to. Um, I occasionally will do pop-ups, but the one thing that you can definitely always catch for me is cookies. Okay. Mm. Cookies, and I have a pound cake that will rival the butter cookie. Mm. Um, I didn't bake that today. So you found your niche basically mm -hmm. with the with the mm -hmm. bacon. And the bacon is the one thing that I can do and not be bothered by anybody. Mm -hmm. I can get up at two o'clock in the morning yeah. and just bake. Don't have to worry about you know scheduling or right. taking phone calls or hearing somebody's concerns. I can just pull up the order form, mm -hmm. look at what a person needs, and then boom, I'm done. Yes, nice. Doesn't nice. take long. So, man, so let's, let's go back to the beginning. Where did it all start? Where did your love for um, for baking begin? It started in a greenhouse on Huff with my grandmother mm -hmm. um, when I moved to Cleveland. Back to Cleveland. In like 99, I was my grandmother's wingman. Mm -hmm. And she would let me get in that hot kitchen with her. Special. And all I wanted to do was be close to her. It just so happened that I had to like wash the dishes and chop the vegetables. Did you get to lick the spoon? As well? I got to lick the spoon. Okay. And she made the best everything. Mm -hmm. So by the time I really started getting interested in cooking, she passed away. Mm -hmm. okay. So all of high school, I spent my time like, cooking for people. I was actually the girl who would fry the chicken for people in high school. Like, they would be like, you was, hey, you was a very important person. I was very, very important. Very important. And they were bringing money and paying me to fry chicken. And I was like, this is a bomb hustle. So for high school, after high school, I went to college and I decided to go to culinary school in Pittsburgh. Nice. So. Sorry about grandma too. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the circle of life. You know, they, people come into your life, they drop nuggets and give you that, the leadership, the ideas of which way to go. My mom didn't cook, my stepmom didn't cook. So my grandmother cooked, but then she was gone. So I was like, how do I continue this skill set? Yeah. Went to culinary school. Got got out of culinary school and worked like a dog in the kitchen for a while. And I was like, I don't wanna do this. You leave work, you smell like onions, your hair sweated out, you can't have nails. It's like, no, nah, I stink. I don't want to do this no more. And then you eating all this bad stuff. So now you just like big and eating and just smelling like onions. How oh, you cute like Eating this. good and smelling like onions. Yeah. yeah that's and then you, your hair <laughs> just, you sweat.
way to you just, I can't get it out of my skin. So I was like, okay, Lord, I'll lose some weight if you get me out the kitchen. And I started substitute teaching. Mm -hmm. And I never, like, I still cook, but I could teach all day every day. How'd you come about that, though? Well, I looked at the money. Mm -hmm. And it was more money than where I was making, what I was making. And I was like, I can go sub while I figure life out. I was in my early 20s trying to figure it out. Because you make your own schedule. Well, you have to pick up a contract from someone. Though. When you're subbing, you just open the app, look and see where you want to go for the day, and click the button. Mm. You show up. That was it's, 10 years ago, and it's still the same now. I was about to say, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, so I was subbing, and then I was like, wait a minute. I can actually teach. Mm -hmm. And I can actually manage a classroom. Mm -hmm. And the guy I was dating at the time, he was getting his master's. So you know when people doing stuff, they want you to do it with them. Mm -hmm. He kept waking up in the middle of the night talking about, Baby, you should get your master's degree. And I was like, wait, don't nobody want to go back to school? I already got my bachelor's. It was the best idea ever. Mm. I got my master's in education, and it unlocked so many doors for me mm. after that. Nice. So I got the combination now. I got the bachelor's in culinary, and I got the master's in education. Mm. That is a hell of a pivot. See? That's that's different. But the, 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 the kitchen teaches you organization it mm. teaches you timing it teaches you self-management and actually how to manage others how to work together in a team mm. the same thing you got to take into the classroom as well so it works okay it works okay. so let me ask you this uh so as we all know we were in school we all know that stuff to a teacher that we like man she was cool as hell <laughs> you know what i'm saying no <laughs> well, wait, no no, I, no. I, no 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 i'm not here to be your friend Okay, right, so, so, I'm here so, to teach so you love bad stuff. When you say, do you have a, <laughs> what, is, what is your, not saying teaching style, but what, what is, uh, if, if someone's watching this and they want to know um, what it would like to be a, a day in life of being a, a teacher or whatnot, what, what would you say to them? In my classroom, it's fair, firm, and fun. Hmm. Okay. I want to be fair, but I have to stay firm or you're going to run over Mm -hmm. You're going to disrespect me. You know, me. when they see sub, it's oh, oh when it's you see sub, it's like, oh, shit, it's it ain't party. Party. <laughs> <laughs> She in here, let's go. Yeah. There's going to be 50 kids in the classroom. We're supposed yeah. to be 50. I heard that. Yeah. I heard that recently. So like, they come from Mary Ellen's oh, yeah. class when it's a sub. Oh, yeah. Like, they actually do that? Fair, firm, Didn't know that. fun. Now, if I can get through fair and firm, I can have fun with you. Mm -hmm. But if you don't respect me, I can't do nothing with you. Yeah. And, and it begins with respect. So that is the major foundation of my classroom setting. Now, once I get that set, playing the music, I'm bringing in the snacks, yeah. I dim the lights. Oh, it's a whole party stuff. time in my classroom. So it's a whole vibe. It's a vibe. Okay. And other people want to be here. So let me ask you this. I have a, basically a two-part question. Okay. Um, first, first, I want to ask you this real quick. What do you teach? What grades do you teach? Is it, is, it specific, is it a specific, is it elementary, is it middle, is it high school? So like my tutoring business started with, I'll take anybody because I needed all money. Okay. Mm. Over time, I realized if I'm working in elementary, I need to just tutor elementary. Mm. So okay. now I'm engulfed in the curriculum and at work. And when I come home to tutor, it's the same recycling of information. Okay. So right now I tutor kindergarten through fifth grade, mm -hmm. reading and math. Oh, okay. Okay. The majority of my children are brown boys. Mm -hmm. um, all of my kids are, are brown children. The majority of them are boys. Mm. Struggling to read. Mm. Mm. Or can't read. Mm. So talking about so there's a question between, you know what I'm saying, women or girls learn to read faster than boys? Is that is that the correlation I'm seeing here? I think they capture the skill easier. Mm. Um and and I work currently at an all boys school. Okay. And I teach first and second grade reading. I have second graders that are reading on a pre K and kindergarten level. Mm -hmm. That means that they are still inverting the letter B and the letter D. Yeah. They're not identifying sight words consistently, they're not reading fluently. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm really concerned on who they will become because they haven't captured the skill of reading yet mm -hmm. and they're going into third grade. So wow. I'll get back to my second part. Okay. Um, and I, I, I want to keep going down this road here because I don't, I, 
you know, I, I never, my mom, just like I do, believed in getting that book. Getting that book. Gifts. I got gifts, but I got books. I always got books as well. Same here. Um, I was always uh, honors English. Always. Um, Brandon oh, yes. will tell you. I will. Uh, <laughs> I will correct his whole text. You know, I'll let him get away with it, but I'll come back a little later. Like, yeah. By the way, yeah, we're, we're not gonna do with... that. We're yeah. not gonna do that. Yeah. So I, I've never <laughs> ever understood. You hear so many times, so many different um, research programs or you know when they're doing research to figure figure out where where children are what level they're on you hear it so much that these children can't read or they got out of high school and couldn't read and things like that where they're in the sixth grade and can read and i guess i just i just don't understand it's how that a, can happen i, I heard Is the word a learning it's a how. disability it's an h-o-w question mark it's, how the answer is not the same for every household for every child. Is it a learning disability or is it sometimes a failure for the parents not to mm. reiterate what the children are learning in school? Like even even still, I feel like just 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 being in the classroom, just being in the class, if your parents don't do anything with you, just being in that classroom for five days a week, I still don't understand how. If I brought in, just say for instance, we all love Alfredo. Okay. Mm. I might like my Alfredo season with just salt and pepper, where you might like cayenne pepper on yours in a little bit of Cajun seasoning, right? Mm -hmm. But you, I on do. the other hand, might want yours <laughs> straight off the pan with a little sprinkle of Parmesan cheese. Right. Don't add anything else. You get it, did you? <laughs> it's in my car. <laughs> We're gonna get it in a minute. But it's the same thing presented to you. Everybody likes it a little bit mm -hmm. different. It's the same thing with education. I have kids whose parents are not involved, they can read at the top of the class. Mm -hmm. I have kids whose parents are involved and the parent and I are scratching our head like, what mm. is this about? Is the learning the way they learn? The way that they learn, the potential, the possibility of a learning disability being there. Mm. Then you have parents who are not involved whose kid has missed 40 to 50 days of school, and they, when they do this, send them to school, they expect me to pull out my magician hat mm -hmm. and pull out a rabbit every time. Mm -hmm. At that time, sorry, I can't focus on your child. I gotta focus on the one who come every day, yeah. who I'm building this relationship with, who I know, okay, he struggled with this yesterday. That's a specific plan for him. I plan for your son to come yesterday and the day before he missed two days this week three days this week and when I have I have asked parents your child missed school an awful lot um, when they are home what are you doing nothing mm. I work like this. I don't have time mm. I gave them my phone to watch the every story is mm. different it's just some of those stories when you sit down and talk to some parents it's like you know you're rackety I work public schools, I can say it, right? I can't you know say where that. it comes from, Yes, yeah, I can you know see why from. this happens. And then I have other kids where it's like, the parent will come in and say, I'm available, I'm trying to do my best, can you help me? And I say, do these things at home. That's one thing with all my parents. In the classroom and in my tutoring business, I give a plan. Your child is struggling with this, go try these things. Your now, I can tell if you try them or not. Mm. I can tell. Yeah, yeah. I can tell. If you didn't try them and you still looking at me like, but I can't get it. I bet you can't. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. at this time, I'm the expert and you're looking to me and you keep coming back with an excuse. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hurt me. It hurts your kid. And I have your kid for nine months. Mm -hmm. Now, that's about 180 days. 85. We take out vacations. We take out a day that I might be absent, a day that they might be absent, we might be down to about 150 days. Yeah. And you don't send them to school for 20. And the curriculum is set for the nine month time. Right, right. So uh, taking you back to the initial point, every story is different. But what I always encourage parents to do, 20 to 30 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. If you got a second grader and they're reading on the kindergarten level, take them to a kindergarten book. Don't go take them to a second grade book and say, you're supposed to be doing this. 
Makes sense. No, if I'm struggling on something and you give me a master class and you yelling at me telling me I'm supposed to have it, how? Take them down to where they are and bring them. I had a kid today, I kid y'all not, third grader. He could not write his alphabets. He could not spell the word that he saw on the screen. I had to go back to basics. I can't sit there and go, how? How you don't know this? Mm -hmm. I got to say, okay, let me come up with a plan. Or something different to, to help him. To help him, because if in third grade he don't have it. Yeah, third grade is the grade to me. I've always said that. By sixth third or seventh grade, grade he going to be looking grade. to fail out. Mm -hmm. By sixth or seventh grade, he's going to be fighting his mama because he's going to be so frustrated. She's going to go to school and he's going to be saying, F you, we ain't going in there. Mm -hmm. So that was the second part of my question, and I'm glad you said that. I got to rub my knees every time I say that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said that because the second part of my question is, I know that this generation and this day and age, um, we have two things going on. We have some children that are highly intelligent that just blow my mind from, you know, babies to two, three, four year olds just shocks me and amazes me about how intelligent, how well they can form a sentence, how, you know, how, how easy they learn, how easy they remember every single thing. And then you have a generation of just the entire environment from, and I blame music. At one point, I never blamed music. I would never say it's music. Mm -hmm. But it, if it's a constant and it's a constant and it's a constant and it's a constant, you're, free, you're feeding your brain this. This is what your brain is soaking up. And I know that we have some, some kids that have these young grandmothers, such as um, but not in that way, but not in that way, but not in that way, um, that are, you know, close in age with their, with their, with their daughter and, you know, and they're not trying to be involved like the old school grandmothers that we, that I had growing up, that's making sure things are done and that's making sure you have morals and that you are, you know, respectful and that you are, um, Make, putting school first and, and those things and I, you have like a mixture of children so how would you say your children are right now how would you say what's coming in your classroom it's a mixture it's not the same household you got 20 kids you got 20, 20 households you know you were just talking about it's the music but who plays the music for the kids to hear mm -hmm. somebody came in here we had a group of kids and somebody came in to cause hurt or harm to us we gonna step in front of the kids and we gonna take it first. Mm -hmm. It's our job to protect our children. Mm -hmm. So we need to protect what they're listening to, what they're seeing, and what mm -hmm. they're what they are exposed to. Mm -hmm. And we're constantly we kicking back. And I, I turned on Marvin Gaye earlier. I had a little date. He said he sang a little Marvin Gaye. I said, oh, baby, you want to play Marvin Gaye? <laughs> <laughs> so I hit Marvin Gaye, right? Yeah. Like, but, show me what you got. <laughs> All the little love songs came on, so I turned that off, and I clicked on the baby. So mm -hmm. now we rock into that. It shifted the environment, right? Mm -hmm. He knew the music. I knew both sides of the music. Yeah. But I want my kids to know the music, but I want them to know their book study, too. Mm -hmm. So I have parents who literally tell me I don't have time to work with my kid. But I also have parents say, well, when she in the back seat, I just would give her a little basket or a little bag and she would have her flashcards inside because we would be maneuvering from mm -hmm. one location to the next and Maybe I might time. It, take me, it took me 20 minutes to ride here. Mm -hmm. If I had a little one, I could have threw her a book. I could have threw her some flat sight words, flashcards, alphabet flashcards. So now we rolling and I might not put my kicking music on. I might have to put something a little bit more smooth right. going. Be more conscious what you're doing. Because I know that my child is a is a sponge. Mm -hmm. So whatever I'm uh, exposing them to, they're gonna repeat. That's a good. You know, not everybody thinks that way. You know, they are thinking I'm I'm in my car. I'm grooving to my music. But see, you not are thinking that you could take that little bit of time. Just so that's minutes. yeah. That's. That's a great point and imagine that you made. If, I hope the parents that's listening, that's a that's that's a good. It in flashcards are idolatry. Mm -hmm. You throw them in the back seat, put the device down. Now read me what you see. 
Mm -hmm. Mama, I don't know this part. Let me see. I'm giving you 20 to 30 minutes of my time, mm -hmm. but I'm I'm investing. What's the reward? You're going to succeed. It's a bad, it's a push. But we cannot say it's all, the the school got it. You went to school today, didn't you? Right. You don't know how to do this homework. Why you don't know how to do it? You was at school all day. You gotta sit down. Right. You gotta take your phone. In my opinion, take your phone, put it face down, and give your kid twenty to thirty minutes a day mm -hmm. of reading, completing assignments, and the investment always pays off. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, I could be wrong. If somebody thinks I'm wrong, inbox me. It's eating these tutors <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> I definitely want to know if you think I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. No, I don't think you're wrong. Okay. I don't think so I got a question. So, um, would you say, and this once again, this is concerning nowadays, because like I didn't know I had dyslexia until I was older. I didn't, mm -hmm. I, I didn't know until after I got out of school. I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, why am I mixing up the words and whatnot? And I didn't know until I did a little investigation myself. So I went all through high school, mm. some part of college, any elementary, without mm. even knowing what the problem was. And I think I did a little bit of overcompensating for the fact I would mix the words up when I would see them to just weed over it time time again to get the word right, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But my question to you is, would you say that nowadays there are more identifying factors to see what those um, learning disabilities are versus was before as, as, as an educator? Or would you say um, that now we're in an age where more learning uh, disabilities are more prevalent now? Um, I didn't know about learning disabilities when I was in school. I was like always at the top of my class and I'm always achieving. To become a teacher, I was like, wow, I didn't know all these things right. were out there, mm -hmm. right? I always tell parents, if you feel like there's something going on, there's a diagnosis for it. Mm -hmm. the, the kid that I work with today, I'm like, there's probably a diagnosis for this. He should know these by now. Mm -hmm. And he has a desire to learn. Right. I told mom, I was like, we're gonna figure it out. Right. But see, you have to have he has a desire to learn. That That's the first step to being one of my tutoring clients. I don't deal with behaviors. Tutoring is my happy place. Mm -hmm. An hour and tutoring go by so fast with me. I'm just, I don't have time for a kid who's like, I don't want to do this. Okay, click. <laughs> I hang up. This is in school. School, a teacher has to deal with you. Right. I can't put you out of my classroom because you got a crappy attitude. Right. But when you come to eating these tutors, mm -hmm. oh, you... You don't want to be here? You're so your favorite <laughs> Peace, right? So with that, I always tell parents, I can help. Now, right now, for me, this is gathering information with this particular kid because yeah. I don't know what's wrong. So are there too many diagnoses out there? I don't think so. Because now that I know that you deal with dyslexia, I can teach to that. Mm -hmm. If okay. I know a kid has ADD, I can teach to yeah, that. Right. But if I don't know what you have, and you're in my room, now I'm just fussing at you. Mm -hmm. You you see this word, why you don't got that? You not focused, what's wrong with you? Right. You might just need a little five minute break. Mm -hmm. Take a walk, go um, to the cafeteria, bring me an apple, come back. That was your little break, now you back. Mm -hmm. You might need to take a piece of paper and cover up the bottom and track with your hand mm -hmm. while you read so you can gather the information. I'll move the paper, review it all, tell me what it means. Right. But now I can help you so that I can push you further. Mm -hmm. So yeah. by the time you get up so high, you won't even have to mention that, oh, when I was in third grade, I had, you didn't have to, that, that's gone. Mm -hmm. We kind of right. watched that, we um, ingrained some skill set inside of you, so now it's mm -hmm. like, I don't even remember, what was that, what was that diagnosis you had? Right. It doesn't define you anymore. Exactly, mm -hmm. no, that's good, that's good. Thank you. No, no, <laughs> you, you, you get what you do, you get it, you know? <laughs> But it's my passion. No, and, and, it's what I enjoy doing. And, and you know what? And I'm glad you segue to my next question. So you have, um, I like how you took what you went to school for, you took the skill set and you made a business behind it. What would you say motivated you to, to do that, prompted you to do that? I was broke. <laughs> I was broke. I love the honesty. Tutors <laughs> make good money. I was broke. For sure. I had to use one for my grandson. My first tutoring client, she got over. Mm -hmm. I hope she watching. <laughs> <laughs> Sis got over. I was, I was back in Cleveland from Pittsburgh. Uh -huh. My car had just been totaled. Um, I was driving my dad's uh, Burgundy 1996 
Cadillac DeVille with no air conditioning. Oh, come on. All oh, leather seats, babe. I'll be in that mug like this. <laughs> Getting it, huh? Going to the West Side making, with a master's degree, making 31000 a year. Mm. And I had a two, I was going over to New Life working out. Shout out to New Life and Maisha. And let me tell y'all, I was in the sauna. No, I emailed a tutor in the city. I said, can you hire me? Just pay me $20 an hour. Mm -hmm. I need a secondary income. And she said, no. I'm not hiring right now. Mm -hmm. I heard God say so clearly, why well, work for somebody when you can do this There's yourself? No and I was in the sauna, and the lady said, my son can't read in the second grade. I could teach him. Right. Mm. I was bold enough to say I'm a tutor and I had never been a tutor Ooh, before come on, but I knew bomb. I had the skill set <laughs> if I'm teaching it in the classroom why can't I teach your son mm -hmm. he didn't know how to put his letters in order mm -hmm. he didn't even know what the letters was we started from the bottom, from the bottom. Mm -hmm. and do you know she was paying me $20 to drive to her house in my Cadillac with no air with no air twice a week mm. and I was so grateful for that extra $40 a month mm -hmm. I mean a week that I just kept doing it and yeah. I kept adding clients and I was like well 20 isn't enough I think I need to go to 25 mm -hmm. oh god looking this is so now, nervous looking, looking back now you're like Whoa. scared to tell them what your price is I was so is. nervous like 25 not knowing they charging 55 uh, I have friends in California charging a hundred an hour no, I meant back then. Oh, back then. Mm -hmm. This was oh, I know tutors. Oh, I'm in the wrong field. You are no tutors. And I slowly moved my scale up. Yeah. And I slowly started gathering kids. And I'm not gonna even lie to y'all. I moved out of my daddy's house. I was making out eight hundred dollars a month tutoring. My apartment was eight hundred dollars a month. I said, Well, I got clients. I go get my apartment. Mm. And I rock and roll. Yeah. And all safe. And now I can get 800 out of one client for two kids. That'll cover you for a month. <laughs> right? But I'm a master <laughs> at my skill. I identify what your child needs and I give them exactly what they need to increase. And if your child can't increase, I'm questioning a couple of things. Are you helping them at home? If you are, are they doing the work that I gave them as homework? If they are, then we need to go higher. Now, there, if you're, we're dropping the ball on parent and student, and I did my job, you're probably not the best client for me. Because mm. my clients have been with me two years, three years. I add one onto the roster. It's like, well, you got about 60 days to show yourself good as a good client, or I gotta let you. The client, back. like, like I, I, I'm a, I'll time out you because I look, you know, give, give, you, you tell, you tell this to the client, like, you, you, you tell the client up top, you got a type of clientele that. That you let them know what you what they what you need from them, not the way around. Yes, because if they're not participating in what she's teaching them, she can tell. Like yeah. you're not moving any, you making her job harder. Because you came back and you're not doing a drop of the homework that I sent you home with. Drop that bomb. I want to. I want y'all. Y'all hope y'all listen to that, girl. right? Because like you don't have to take all. You don't have to take any. And, any I, and I had to learn that the hard way. I used to want every client, right? Now I'm dealing with these clients, but then I got to deal with their mamas. Mm. My first client is the mother. Mm -hmm. If you don't like my tone, right. if you don't like my voice, if you don't like my personality, we're not going to mesh. Mm. You're not going to want me working with your kid right. because I might have to get in their ass every now and then. Mm. I was on the, on the phone with a kid one day. He said, I got my notebook, I got my pencil. He had nothing in front of him. Mm. And I'm asking him questions. His mother on the other side of the door listening. She busting a room. She said, motherfucker, I'm paying money for this <laughs> shit and you ain't got what I tell you. I'm about to whoop y'all ass. <laughs> I know that's right. Baby, she can and I'm and I'm quick to save my kids, right? I want to save mm. them from all hurt. I literally said, I will save you from this, but you earned that asshole. <laughs> this ain't school. This eating these tutors. Yeah. Right? I, she I, right, she paying. You right. your mother, this lady says she she said, Erica, don't worry about it on Thursday. I'm gonna send you what mm -hmm. my sons need for the four weeks. Yeah. We jump on. I jump on with them once a week, both kids, and they're flourishing. Mm. You see what I mean? I'm not just taking people's money and saying, aha, I got your money, and then I leave them like, well, what you gonna do? Right, right, right. No, right, right, right. I become results. I'm messaging people's mamas at one o'clock in the morning. Hey girl, I just need to move your appointment a little bit later, a little bit earlier. How's school going? They sending me results. Like, mm. 
I'm, I'm telling people, I might not be able to guarantee you results, but the way that I teach and the way that I work with my families, I'm pretty much telling you that we're going to see growth. Mm -hmm. if, if you do, it's an if then. If you do this, right. then I can that produce process. that. Mm -hmm. So, it, yeah, it, but it comes with time. A young entrepreneur is going to try to take every dollar they see. Because mm -hmm. I, I, why did you start? Because I was broke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I'm not broke. Mm -hmm. I really don't need you. You mean choosy. You know I can be mean? real choosy and say, well, I got five good clients. I don't need y'all. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's uh, only me, though. We got, we, got, we, got, we got to break that down. So I, I need our audience. Because a, lot, a lot of our audience might have clientele. Like, man, the, the money's not worth what I got to deal with with this person. I've been there. I literally had to be like, you know what? Forget the the country we got. I'm going to disregard I've been it. fired by, from people. Mm -hmm. Some nail girls in the city can't handle me. Like, mm -hmm. I like my stuff right. Like, do me right. Don't come give me no half job. Mm -hmm. Right? They, 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 want to, they want you to sit down, shut up, and take what they give you, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not the right client for them. Mm -hmm. Right? I, I'm paying my money. I'm paying my money, I and I should be able to say, my nails popped off yesterday, uh, and I just paid you $60 for that. Right, and everybody can't handle that. So I've been, I've been removed from client lists. I'm okay with saying that. Mm -hmm. um, that taught me how to remove people from my client list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. I had somebody who I loved, loved her son, was tutoring the whole family. This woman got on my nerves so much, I had to let her go, mm -hmm. and sent her a thousand dollar refund. Mm -hmm. Here, baby, I'd rather be broke. Mm. Take it off for it? peace, peace of mind. Because mm. yeah, I tutored before I came. Yeah. A bad tutoring session of how you have to go get in bed. You got to go lay down. <laughs> a bad tutoring session lay be like, all the way what down. this is? Oh, I don't even drink Moscato, but let me go ahead. <laughs> for peace of mind. All the way down. Lay it all the way down. <laughs> I need a break. Uh, what, what happened? Here? I, I'm just trying to figure it out right now. Hold on. Sure, you can just go on class on that. Like, I get just, it. Just that alone, just... just one, it's hard them. though. It's yeah. hard when you're um, an entrepreneur on any level mm -hmm. and you have to fire a client. Yeah. That's hard. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. It's worth it, I believe, to say. Yes, you have to have your peace of mind. Right? My peace of mind. I have a I have a standard of what my brand represents. I have a certain clientele that I want to work with. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't mind sending your money back. I, I, I love how you said that. You have a standard. You know the quality of, 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 of service you're going to give that client so you can charge the rate that you charge but at the same time you know at the end of the day what I'm going to give is going to be worth it and not going to be worth it hey listen if you don't match what, what that standard is you can't, I, I can't take and I'm not saying that it happens often either mm -hmm. but when you're dealing with people and personalities and money and situations and kids woo, mm -hmm. you got to be ready Shoot, I, are you are you tutoring on how to be a tutor? <laughs> I do. I have that available. Oh man, listen, I, I was joking with that, but that's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, about. I have that available because what I learned in being broke, how to monetize. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'm I like, right you what what do you like to do? What's your skill set? Oh, we can monetize. Yeah. That. And before you know it, it's like, oh wait, wait, I like cookies. When my family fought over the cookies, mm -hmm. when they argued over the cookies, I said, Oh, I need to sell those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all argue, y'all fighting over them. Mm -hmm. We need to sell these. Okay. So, you know, I, you, you, you go broke so long, it's like, I don't want to be broke no more. Yeah. And I also don't want to make $10 an hour anymore. Right. In my opinion. That's just me. Right. No, I got you. Okay, okay so, so, what is, so tell us about some of the services, services you offer or whatnot. I didn't know. I, I was joking about that, but I 